um, there is a way in which you can check if a method throws an exception like it's supposed to throw, right? So let's say your, um, if, what we've looked at so far is the happy path scenario, right? So your method takes a bunch of inputs and then it returns a response and then you compare, okay, the response matches, but there is another path that your method can take, which is throw an exception. Sometimes that exception is required. You want your method to throw an exception when something happens. Now, how do you validate that it is throwing the right exception? So for that, you use a thing called uh, assert throws, All right? So let me switch to my ID and here, I'm gonna go to my class here. I've added a couple more uh, methods since we looked at this class last. I have, uh, we just had add, now I've added subtract, multiply, and divide, all right? And uh, you can guess which method I'm gonna choose to demonstrate the exception, it's the divide. I am not doing any checks here, so there is a very good possibility that somebody can pass in zero as the denominator, and this is gonna throw an arithmetic exception. I think it's the arithmetic exception. So. How do you validate that it is throwing the right exception? So let's say I go to my uh, test class here, and then I write a test for the divide, All right? So it's a test wide test divide. And now I'm going to um, copy this over. Again, this is probably gonna be the last time we're gonna be copying this. We're soon gonna move on to, uh, you know, cleaning this part up. But let's say I want to test if uh, Matthew tells dot divide of let's say one and uh, zero. I want to call this and I want to test and make sure that this thing returns an exception, right? I want an exception to be thrown. How do I do it? Well, one thing you can do is surround this in a try catch block, right? If I put this in a try catch block and in my catch, I say uh, I get the object and uh, which is the exception object, and I say assert that object is equal to, assert equals that object and then the, ob the exception object that I have in mind. Uh, the other thing I could, uh, uh, the other thing I can also do is um, if that exception is not caught, like I, you know, I can put a return in the catch and then below that I can fail so that if the exception is not caught and then it passes through, it definitely fails. This is another use case where fail comes in handy, by the way. You can put fail where there are paths in your code you don't want executed in your test. So in that case, you can say, okay, if the test executes up to this point and this line executes, I want it to fail. So fail is a good uh, you know, um, statement you can use for this. That'll work. But there is a better way, and that is something called assert throws. Let me show you how that looks like. So you remember that we have uh, the assertions imported uh, statically for this whole uh, class. So all the assertions are gonna work uh, exactly like you would expect. So you can, just like I had assert equals, I didn't have to import assert equals, I did a star. So you might choose to not do this and import everything individually, in which case you would have to do assertions dot assert equals and assertions dot assert throws. But thanks to this, I am not going to need to import assert throws. I have it available for me and I can use this. So assert throws works like this. Assert throws, you see here, it takes in, uh, there are multiple method signatures like you would expect for all of these asserts. It, it is done this way to deal with different data types. But then there is a common thing that all these things have uh, for assert throws. You see here there is uh, expected type, all right? And then the executable. This is like the basic, the most basic signature. So what you're doing is you are giving it, let's focus on the second argument first. It, you're giving it a lambda, you're giving it an executable, right? And that executable is going to perform the thing that throws an exception. All right, so let's say the executable does this thing, divide by zero, all right? So you're gonna pass it the executable that on execution of which is going to result in an exception, all right? So you give it the executable. And then the first argument is going to be the expected exception type. And you're telling, hey, I'm gonna give you this executable which needs to throw an exception. And the first argument is, here's the exception that it needs to throw, right? So you assert that this executable throws this exception, that's assert throws, right? Ex assert that, 
this thing throws this thing. So it's like second argument, executable, throws the first argument, which is the exception. So this is gonna make it very simple. So what I'm gonna do here is um, put this inside a, uh, a lambda. So I'm going to create a lambda here, and then uh, I'm going to pass in this guy. All right, now this is going to, I mean, this semicolon here, and this is going to return uh, the arithmetic exception dot class. I'm giving it the class and I'm telling, hey, assert throws, assert this. So what assert throws is gonna do is it's gonna probably surround your uh, executable inside a try catch itself and it's gonna do all the work. So all that stuff that I talked about, putting a try and you know asserting in a catch, assert throws is doing that for you, right? So this is, it's as simple as that. Now I'm going to pass in a third argument, which is like we've seen, it is the statement that you need to display, the message that you need to display if this were to not throw an exception in this case. So I'm going to say uh, divide by zero. Should throw. And that's it. It's a very simple uh, method. So all that complicated stuff that, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the way you had to do this in uh, JUnit 4, but this it wasn't this simple. This one makes it very simple thanks to lambdas, right? Lambdas were not a thing when JUnit 4 was created first, so they didn't have this construct. Now that we have the construct, you can pass in functions, you can pass in behaviors, and, you know, it works well as a, as a method signature for this thing. I'm going to save and run this guy here. And test why it works fine. Now, if it doesn't throw an exception, then it would fail. Or let me change this to null pointer exceptions. If the exception is different, then it is going to result in an error. All right, so divide by zero should throw, and then it says, unexpected exception thrown, right? It expected null pointer, but was arithmetic exception. So you, this test is gonna fail for two reasons. One, if the exception doesn't throw at all, and second, if the wrong exception is thrown. So this is one way of validating that.